Hello and welcome back to the NHL Best Bets. Yesterday there were only nine games instead of ten as uh, extreme weather postponed the uh, game in Dallas uh, between Dallas and uh, uh, Nashville. Um, we selected two games um, like we always do and um, only difference this time was that um, actually one bet was uh, correct. So here were our picks. Um, Calgary visited Vancouver. Um, draw no bet was right bet here because uh, game was 3-3 after the regular time. Then um, 20 seconds in overtime um, Calgary in power play decided the game by winning 4-3. Uh, Johnny Chahoki was the goal scorer here. Then uh, another game, um, Anaheim San Jose, we picked under five and a half goals. It was five goals, so correct pick here. Quite a bit uh, similar game that's, that was uh, expected. Good goaltending, uh, a bit so-so attack from both teams. San Jose won the game 3-2. Uh, to two, And um, was this was their first uh, home victory this season, although it was second uh, home game for them. Um, Tommy... What's your take um, out of these games? Well, first of all, I'm really happy that we finally got some some green on that screen you have. So uh, a good pick for the uh, the under in San Jose. A very defensive game as we predicted. Good goaltending, and uh, it was uh, I was pretty certain that they're gonna score in the empty net in the end to to ruin our bet, but they didn't. So now I think I can feel the the tide turning. Then this is a, this is a good sign for us. But um, overall, very uh, very much like uh, anticipated this game. San Jose, a little bit stronger team, but uh, not a lot of shots. Very good goaltending. Uh, not not specifically good power play or not a lot of penalties. So very very even game, very uh, close battle. So three two is a quite uh, justified result in that game. Um, and likewise in Vancouver, the Vancouver Calgary game, pretty much as we did predict that it's going to be a very even battle. Uh, with great odds for Vancouver, we uh, we took this pick a little bit a risky one, and uh, Calgary turned uh, turned the game then uh, to their favor in the second period. Uh, Vancouver equalized uh, half a minute before the game ended, so couldn't even do the cash out early on. So uh, in a, that in that way, uh, a bad pick from us, but a nice coin flip again with good uh, good odds for the whole team. So. Um, this is again a bet that I would do any day again, but uh, yeah, let's look at those draw no bet options in this case because we don't seem to get these uh, shootouts and um, over times correct. Yeah, it's um, maybe the correct tendency that uh, when we are always betting um, home underdogs uh, in these games, uh, the stronger team um, is then taking the two points in overtime or in shootout and um, that's the main reason why we are losing these tight games um, and um, I think when whenever the odds are somehow favorable uh, and available for draw no bet um, market uh, that would be good bet to take for the underdog uh, because the coin flip is not 50 50 but uh, it's a bit uh, tweaked toward the stronger team yeah, that's historically what usually happens is that the stronger team will uh, in the long run be the better one. But in these cases, when you have enough value, then it's worth to, uh, worth to take the, uh, the underdogs as well. Um, how about other games? Um, yesterday we discussed um, at least um, um, Arizona-San Jose game that uh, we had some value there. And... Um, there were also a few other games that um, simulation got correct this time. Yeah, uh, that Arizona game, the early one, was a really tight affair, as anticipated. One nothing for the home team. Um, we had great value there for for the for Arizona Coyotes, like you see my old old jersey here. Um, we got Arizona at fifty percent, while the the odds indicated only around forty five. Uh, so good value there. Also. The Florida uh, rivalry game between Tampa Bay and uh, Flo uh, Florida Panthers, of course, uh, 
we were thinking uh, in our video that uh, Tampa Bay might actually be able to pull out the, the victory this time, but the simulation disagreed and told that uh, it will be Florida. About 41% um, of the simulations went for Florida, and uh, the odds were somewhere along 160, I think. Uh, I lost the game in my system here, but anyway, great, great value there for the, for the Panthers again. Uh, good game in every uh, regard, a lot of goals scored and, uh, and a fun to watch. And I think our discussion yesterday about the long breaks, um, like in case of uh, Buffalo, when they faced um, Islanders was a um, good pick as well that we didn't select uh, Buffalo, even though there were some value for for them because um, they they couldn't get their game going. Of course, um, Islanders is a sturdy defensive team, but um, still it was uh, clear that uh, Buffalo hadn't uh, played um, in recent history at all. Yeah, in that game it was uh, probably a somewhat uh, of uh, misinterpreted by the by the system. They don't really understand this sort of a a two week break because it hasn't really happened before. So maybe there is a little bit of a some adjustment we can make, but uh, at least we got the under correct in that game as well. It was 58% uh, uh, predicted to go under and it was only uh, four goals scored. So Islanders won one to three. Uh, very uh, New York Islanders tight game overall, very tight defensively, couldn't, um, did not allow Buffalo to do any, uh, any uh, to get into the scoring position. So a uh, very good game from the Islanders and going to continue tonight um, in the other issue of these teams. And um, I think another under that we got um, correct was um, the game between uh, Chicago and Detroit, um, even though uh, it wasn't uh, our boy Kevin Lankin in the goalie, but uh, Malcolm Subban in, in Chicago's goal. Um, 3-2 after overtime, Chicago won the game and uh, um, Detroit, even though they played um, reasonably well to their level, couldn't uh, capitalize more than single point. Yeah, that was a good prediction by the machine, pretty much exactly as, as it was supposed to be. Quite, uh, quite a tight game. We got Chicago winning about 63% of the simulations and the scoreline in the simulations was 2.6 to 1.9. So uh, three to two is uh, pretty much as close as it gets in these these numbers, and of course the under was about seventy five percent. So uh, excellent pick again and good value uh, value selection all over the slate. So we got the side value money line and the totals correct in this game. So always a good good indication that the system works when everything goes exactly as uh, as it has uh, indicated in the in the early on. Yeah. I think um, this was a good example of the game that uh, the road uh, favorite uh, with uh, some value is still worth to bet um, in many cases, even though some systems um, indicate that it, it's always home underdog regardless of the value that you should bet, but uh, that uh, that is naturally not the case, but you always need to compare your probabilities to the odds and find the value there. Um, any other games that um, you would uh, like to highlight from um, last night? Well, highlights were, of course, these heavy, heavy scoring games in Canada. So you, we had uh, Toronto and Ottawa both scoring uh, more than five goals. So it was overtime uh, for Ottawa. Uh, six to five, um, something very unexpected from the Ottawa team. Of course, we've been we've been uh, bashing them a little bit. They haven't played that well, but now they show Toronto that if you take your uh, foot off the pedal, they will they will <laughs> come back and uh, and manage to to win the game in the overtime or was it shootout? Not entirely sure, but uh, either way, we did have we did have Toronto winning it. Yeah. I think every time when you score um, more than 10 goals in a game, it's uh, surely entertaining for everybody else, but the goalie and uh, guys who have bet under in these games. But um, at least we didn't pick uh, the unders in in these games. I think it's always uh, difficult to bet under when there is a um, offense capacity like Toronto or Edmonton um, on the ring. 
Yeah, definitely. And of course, uh, sometimes it depends a lot on the head coach, but sometimes they're not very happy either if you uh, allow five goals. Even if you win the game in the end, it might have not been exactly the way that the coaches want you to play. Uh, but there was the other game as well, uh, Winnipeg Edmonton. Our simulations, of course, liked Winnipeg in this one, uh, which was a bit surprising because of, uh, of our tendency to predict Edmonton to win. Uh, we did have Edmonton for money line, so we had 53%. Um, going for the home team, but the odds were so high for uh, the Winnipeg Jets that the side value went for them. So we have had them by uh, 46% and the odds were around 120 plus. So uh, great, another really great side value pick there and a nice profit from Winnipeg. And they got their, uh, finally their attack going again because last time around we predicted them to do better, but they didn't. So now six goals a uh, good show that they are capable of scoring of course against edmonton's pretty lousy defense but still and by the way leon dreisaitl didn't score a single point so his point streak is snapped now so let's see how that affects the next game of edmonton oilers yeah i think edmonton uh, uh, goalkeeping wasn't on the level that um, we expect because um, edmonton overshoot winnipeg uh, uh, 54, uh, 45 to 24 and still uh, managed to lose the game so that is something that um, it, it would be interesting to see who is going to be the next uh, goalie in, in next game for Edmonton. Yeah there is a definite difference when you take a look at Winnipeg Jets goaltending you have Connor Hellebuck and then in Edmonton you have all due respect to Mikko Koskinen and Mike Smith, but neither of them are really these uh, Vezina candidate uh, goaltenders. So it's something that Edmonton is definitely a little bit behind compared to the some of these other Canadian teams. That's true. Um, tonight there is uh, uh, six games uh, scheduled. Let's see if um, Dallas um, managed to play against Nashville tonight. Uh, but um, we made a few picks uh, again and uh, let's uh, go those through first and then we can check if there's some other games that uh, would make sense to bet. First one here is um, second round of heavyweights in the West. Um, Colorado continues their trip in Vegas. Um, uh, two nights ago they lost 0-1 to one after a long break. Um, but um, I think the game was very, very even um, and um, Colorado had a lot of chances to score more than zero goals. Uh, um, another shot tonight, um, Colorado gets plus 100 odds, but um, our simulations indicate them as a favorite. So we pick Colorado again in this um, matchup. And another game, uh, Washington uh, visits uh, Pittsburgh. This is also second game of the series. Um, last um, time Pittsburgh won 6-3. to three. Now the over 6.5 goals um, have odds uh, plus 112. Uh, these teams have score on average. Um, I think Washington over 6.5, Pittsburgh over 7 goals uh, during the season. So expectation is that uh, there is not too much um, defending um, uh, available tonight and uh, also depending a little bit of the goalies who are playing if there is um, a second um, goalies and in case of Washington it means that it's a uh, Greg Billington in a goal that uh, has maybe passed his peak um, in NHL yeah these are uh, these are good peaks again um, repeating the Colorado Avalanche selection is quite a quite a no-brainer here. It was one nothing uh, last time around. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury played him ex extremely well. Uh, now it's interesting to see if he's still there, um, or uh, are they gonna put their uh, third string keeper Oscar Dansk, or is there someone else playing? But uh, Mark Andre Fleury seemed very confident after the last shutout that he will be the number one keeper going forward. So interesting to see how how that will fold out. Of course, Colorado. Uh, a lot better offensively than what we saw um, against Vegas after a long pause. So probably going to bounce back quite hard from that. We saw that early in the season against St. Louis and a couple of other teams that when Colorado has played first so-so uh, game, they will bounce back and uh, 
and make it work. So I think Colorado will come better prepared to this one than they were uh, in the previous one. Um, and then the uh, rivalry in the Eastern Division between uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and Washington Capitals, always uh, heavy scoring games. Um, like you said, I think it was Capitals scored more than uh, seven goals or in Capitals games. There's been more than seven goals uh, per game and in Pittsburgh as well, more than six and a half. So um, statistically also supporting our selection here. Uh, last game, uh, both goaltenders, not very good. Uh, defensively very shaky um, shaky results of course the last two goals were scored in the empty net um, but still um, a lot of work to do especially for the capitals uh, in the defense uh, they lead a lot of easy goals from in front of the net and uh, when you take a look at the top lines of these teams uh, all of them both of them have a lot to improve and uh, they are able to score that four goals per team as our simulations indicate yeah, I think it's important to to check the goalies before the game because uh, even though they have played their first string goalies, uh, there has been this uh, six and a half, seven goals per game. Uh, let's see what happens when they bring the secondary line of the goalies there. It could be another six uh, goals, seven goals per team in easily because of the strong offense both sides. Yeah, and even the first string uh, keepers, if you have uh, Vitek Vanecek or Samsonov in uh, in uh, Washington net and uh, Tristan Cherry and uh, the Smith for Penguins, neither of those goalies uh, are very good. They are decent NHL level keepers, but not really impressed so far. So like you said, doesn't matter uh, even if it is the number one keepers, these offensive uh, uh, weapons are able to destroy those keepers easily. Um, there are two teams that are coming back from the long um, layovers and, and long breaks. Uh, Minnesota goes to LA, plays against Kings at Staples Center. Uh, they haven't played in 13 days. Um, and then New Jersey goes to New York, um, cross the river there and uh, plays in uh, Madison Square Garden against the Rangers. Um, they haven't played, I think, uh, in 16 days. Um, um, I think both teams have some value in our simulations, but like you mentioned earlier, a simulation maybe doesn't understand that uh, these guys haven't been training for uh, more than a week and playing around two weeks, so they may not be ready for uh, this matchup. Yeah, we have value for both of those teams. Not a lot, though, and it's always a, a difficult task to... Uh, to, especially they are starting on the road, Minnesota in, in Los Angeles and uh, New Jersey is going to, to New York. Uh, and um, like we've seen, maybe if you have a break of, let's say, five days, maybe even seven days, that's still OK. You can just you can still practice. You can keep your body ready for the for the hockey. But when you're off for two weeks, uh, you probably have to be quarantined somewhere alone or at least not with a, not with the whole team. Um, I think that that will show, especially in the early early on in the game. So maybe two periods, time to adjust, and then you get it going. But uh, that's why these are a little bit little bit um, uncertain, I'd say, of the from the simulation point of view. That I don't think it simulates really well this sort of uh, like you said layover of two weeks. Yeah, um, another game that um, I think would be good to highlight here. Uh, Islanders uh, plays Buffalo, like you said, back to back. Uh, um, Buffalo has now had one game after their long break. Um, I think they have only one away from the last uh, night's uh, performance. But uh, when we take a closer look of the statistics here, back to back games that Islanders have played on the road, um, they have won 52%, while their general away win percentage is a 48 um, in the uh, last three seasons. So they have performed better in these back-to-back games. And um, in Buffalo, uh, their win percentage at home is uh, 44. So they haven't been any great team uh, during the last three seasons. But their home back-to-back win percentage is only 33. So um, based on this and our simulation uh, numbers, um, Islanders um, should be the right choice here. 
yeah, we have Islanders about 60% winning uh, winning this. Of course, uh, those numbers indicate a lot of this, how uh, Barry Trotz is, is playing his New York Islanders team. The more they are familiar with their opponent, the better they are able to counter it and the better they are able to match the, the opponents. Because New York Islanders is by no means um, this sort of top level teams if you compare it to Boston's or, or these uh, Western Giants, Colorado, Vegas. New York Islanders quality is not that high, but it is a team that everyone knows their place. And when they are playing uh, this sort of matchup hockey that Barry Trotz is an absolute king, um, they are really difficult to beat. And now the second game against Buffalo, uh, Sabres probably got a little bit, um, little bit more energy now than they did last night. But still, Islanders a tough match, and uh, I think that uh, Islanders will take this one. The Islanders have improved their playing during the last five games. They have won uh, four of those uh, after they went um, this kind of miserable six game, oh, no, five games losing streak uh, against uh, Philadelphia, Washington and New Jersey. But then uh, against Pittsburgh Rangers and Boston as well as yesterday at Buffalo, they won um, four out of uh, five. So. Uh, Arrow is pointing upwards for Islanders, and let's see if they can continue their good game um, tonight as well. Yeah, it does look pretty good now the, how the Islanders are, are making the plays, and they are also uh, producing offensively now, which, uh, which was lacking in those games that they were losing. Um, let's see if the Nashville-Dallas game is played, um, how our simulations are looking there in this match. Uh, we have Dallas as a favorite at home, uh, about 65%. So uh, there is value of 7%. The odds indicate about 58% for the home team. So we are going with the Dallas Stars. Nashville has been a, a big, big disappointment in that last couple of uh, couple of games they've played. Uh, it doesn't seem that the John Hine has been able to get the defense working properly. And um, it might be his downside that he's not that good in uh, organizing the offense. And of course, Nashville's offense is not, again, uh, in par with uh, with these better teams in the league. So uh, tough, tough matchup, of course, uh, for Nashville here. Dallas uh, improved a bit, quite a, we'll, we'll not, we're not sure yet if it's a contender still or, uh, or are they past their peak, but uh, at their best, they are one of the better teams in the league. So, uh, very good, very good pick at home with a uh, good value also. Let's see if um, these teams make through the snow and ice in Texas and um, can play their games. Um, here in Finland, um, winter <laughs> is uh, showing the best part of it. Um, sun is shining and a few minus degrees. So, we enjoy this during the daytime and then a great hockey at night. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do some skiing, maybe. Sounds good. We'll catch up uh, again tomorrow. Bye-bye.